How's it going everybody? Ed Ricker here. Out at the field, we're about to do some flying. This is part two of the two-part series, Beginner's Guide to the DJI Mavic Air. By the way, I want to give a shout out to Orca Bags, who gave me this really awesome uh, backpack. It can hold my camera, the drone, it can hold all the other stuff that I had to bring to, to make this video, except for the tripod that the camera's standing on. The OR21 is a really high quality backpack, got a lot of pockets. It can fit a 15-inch laptop, and it's reinforced with these aluminum bars so that it hovers off your back a little bit so you don't start sweating through your backpack. With that said, let's get the rest of this video underway. We're gonna calibrate the compass, we're going to launch the drone, and we're gonna play with some gesture functions to see what the Mavic Air is capable of. Let's do it. Now I'm starting this video with the controller already connected to my phone and the drone already unfolded and ready to go and charged up. So if you have any questions about that, check out part one where we go through that whole process as well as IMU calibration and also DJI GO 4 app setup. So what we're gonna do first is turn on our remote controller. Press the power button once and then again and hold it. It'll chime and then the red light indicates that it is seeking a connection. Now press the power button once and again and hold it on the uh, drone's battery. You'll see the gimbal flip back and forth and that's fine. It's part of the startup process. You'll also see the propellers kind of uh, move back and forth just a little bit. That's all normal. It's important that we're starting on a flat surface so that that camera can do that. If we were doing this in grass, it might get caught on a blade of grass and it wouldn't be able to start up properly. Now let's go into our DJI GO app. This is the DJI GO 4 app. The first thing we're going to do is calibrate the compass. I usually calibrate the compass every time I fly in a new location. I only calibrate the IMU once every couple of weeks or if I'm encountering an issue. But with the uh, compass, we'll do it today because this is a new area. There's a couple ways to get to the compass, but the easiest way is if we click on the Ready, Set, Go GPS up at the top left, and we see compass fourth from the top, calibrate. Press calibrate and then press start. At this point, make sure you're not around any metallic objects. You're gonna to wanna to be away from uh, reinforced concrete and that type of thing. Um, so then we spin the drone horizontally, 360 degrees, and I'm gonna orbit around the drone. The, the drone's not gonna orbit around me. Okay, and then vertically 360 degrees, same story. There we go, compass calibration complete. It's at this point in time that we can take off if we have our settings right. We are gonna address a few more things here and then get this thing up in the sky. But for right now, it's as safe as we can make it and everything is all set to fly. What I'm first gonna do, since I wanna take video, is I'm going to switch video from picture. So here we go, right there, it's that little switch toggle. And things look a little different now. I'm gonna go into the camera settings and make sure I'm on auto. We can, we can make manual videos later on about manual settings, but right now we're using auto. I'm also gonna make sure that I'm shooting in the correct video size that I want. So right now, this is gonna be a 1080 video. I'm gonna do 1080 at 30 frames per second. Finally, on the right, you see that gear option. Uh, let's just make sure that we're recording to our SD card. We have an SD card in there. However, if we didn't, we could have eight gigabytes of internal storage, but right now, I wanna use my SD card that's in it right now. You also have some formatting options if you wanna format the internal or external media. Now there are two main ways to launch the drone. The first way is to press upper left here, the takeoff button. We can slide to take off, which we're gonna do right now. Here we go. Basically that was the slide to take off feature and it's gonna hover there at about four feet indefinitely until I tell it to do something else. My hands are completely off the controls. It's a very safe drone in that regard where, you know, if you get into trouble, just let go and it'll hover. It's a really nice drone. So let's bring it back down and I'll tell you the second way to take off and it's the way that I do. I'm going to press down on the throttle. There we go. That's simple, just hold it until the prop stops spinning. I'm gonna show you the second way. The way I like to take off and I think it's a little more simple and, and efficient is to press down and left on the left thumbstick and down and right on the right thumbstick. And together, the props will start to spin. Now, I'm not flying yet. This is the great thing about this. You can start the prop spinning, make sure everything sounds good, looks good, and then all you gotta do is press up with your throttle. 
Once you take off, the drone then records where you took off with a little downward camera and sensor, and that then enables it to come back and, and return to home. Remember, the home button is right here. So if I press home, it will automatically land back where it launched. I just gotta make sure that the trajectory, the way it's coming is, is clear of obstacles, trees, buildings, whatever. The controls are pretty simple. Um, the left thumbstick is your throttle, so that's down and up. Your yaw is left and right, which will turn the drone. So this is throttle, up and down. Just moving my left thumbstick up and down. Then my right thumbstick is yaw, so that will turn the drone. So here we go, turning. There we go. By the way, when it beeps, it's because it's, it's uh, sensing that we're here. That's the, uh, the sensor it's telling us that it's not gonna be able to move much forward because it senses that we're there. I'm actually trying to get as close as I can and there it stops. So that's the sensor telling us that there's something in the way. That's a good thing. We turn it away from us, we don't hear that anymore. Now let's get a little, now let's get a little bit higher. So we are at 40, about 45 feet right now. Now let's move forward, backward, left and right. To do that, we're gonna use our right thumb stick. So this is to move back, to move forward, to move left and to move right. This is moving forward. Okay, this is moving backward. This is moving right. And this is moving left. So together you can create some movements. There's a yaw, and I'm also moving to the right. You can go up. Now, if you want the camera to look down, you use this dial. This dial right here will pitch down your camera, okay? So you, you put your, your, your kind of like your index finger on there. Now let's pitch the camera down. There we go. So that is exactly underneath the drone now. Let's pitch it back up. And it goes up into the sky, about 30 degrees beyond level with the horizon. And that right there is about level with the horizon. Let's do a little flyby here. So I'm gonna press forward, and I'm going to pitch the camera down. There we go. Gonna yaw a little bit to get me centered up. And stop moving. So just remember, if you ever get in trouble, stop moving the drone. If you, if you get in trouble, there's, there's trees or something, just let your hands off the, the sticks and your drone will hover, as it is right now. So say I'm flying forward and I get in trouble, just let loose, and it stops and it hovers. It's pretty smart, isn't it? And by the way, there is one setting that I could have adjusted earlier, is white balance. White, right now my white balance is set to sunny, but it definitely is cloudy out here. So let's go to cloudy. Kind of changes the colors a little bit to make them look a little more correct and true to life. Now since I've been doing this tutorial for a little while now, I've actually run out of battery. So I have 18% left and you can hear the remote is beeping at us, it's giving us a warning. Now at 18 or now 17%, that's gonna be okay. We can still fly, but it's strongly suggesting that we land this thing. Aircraft will return to home in five, four, three, two, one. So it's automatically landing. So I have my low battery warning set to, I think, uh, 20%, and then at 15%, uh, it tries to auto land. You can cancel that if you want to, but I would strongly suggest you find some way to get this thing on the ground as soon as possible. All right, let's put another battery in here and we'll try intelligent flight modes. So there are two ways to enter the gesture mode, which is the cool mode that the Spark could do and now this can do. Um, it's a really cool sensing mode that will enable you to control the drone with your hands. The first way to do it is to already have the drone uh, in the air. So let's launch it. Take off. 
Okay? And we'll hover about right there. Okay? And it's facing that way. We're going to have to get in front of it, and then we can uh, go into the intelligent flight mode, hit smart capture, and then put our hand up and control this. The button to do that is right here. It's a little remote control button. Press it. All right, now go to smart capture. Enter mode. Okay. So, it already detected us. It knows we're there. We're not controlling it yet, but it is tracking us. I can just keep my hands off of the uh, controls and it's going to turn. You can see there are yellow lights on the drone. When I put my hand out, those lights will turn green. And now, it's got me. So I can move the drone by just moving my hand left and right. And it goes pretty quick. I mean, if I, if I do this, it's pretty, uh, pretty responsive. It knows what I'm trying to do. At this point, it's tracking me so I can walk around and uh, it's still got me. I can walk this way. It's got me the entire time. I can actually probably take this thing off because I completely 100% untethered from technology at this point. And it's still got me. It's pretty sweet. I'm actually gonna turn my back to it, which is very scary. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to tell it to go further away from me. How you do that is you put two hands and you stretch them out. You put your two hands up and you move them outward. You put your hands closer and the drone will come back to you. Now I'm recording a video so those lights on the front of it have turned off. That's fine. Now I'm gonna put my hands back up and stretch them out. There we go, stop, we got it. Tell it to go higher so I can raise my hand up. Move it back into frame here. There we go. I'm gonna tell it to go down. And let's see how high it can go. That's about as high as it'll go, okay. The other way to enter the mode, and this is the way that you can actually take off in the mode, you press this button twice, the button on the back of the drone. You press that twice. There we go, okay, and it beeped twice. Now it is in uh, gesture mode from the takeoff. Let me focus this up a little bit. Now we should be able to take off with just our hand too. Okay, it's got the blinking lights and it's taken off, there we go. There we go. And it's got us. Now let's land. To take a picture, you use two fingers. Three, two, one. Three, two, oh, it one. took two. If you want to start recording video, you put your hand into a box like this. So watch. There we go. Started recording video. So you can pretty much do everything you want to, well, within reason, uh, uh, using the selfie functions with this drum just by using hand gestures. All right, let's stop recording. So I'm gonna latch it onto me again. It's got me. Yes, it does, okay. Stop recording. The two other intelligent flight modes I really like are both in quick shot. So let's go to quick shot. Right there, we have our boomerang and our asteroid. And those are two very popular um, intelligent flight modes for the Mavic Air. Uh, I don't know if we have space to do, we might have space to do the boomerang. You gotta make sure there's no trees around you. I usually keep an eye on boomerang because it goes back really far and you gotta make sure it can accomplish the maneuver. <laughs> but also looking at it kind of spoils the effect. But I think it's gonna be okay. <laughs> there we go. Hey, it sensed that pole, that was pretty good. This one is asteroid, and basically you just have to make sure that there's enough space behind the drone and directly up. It goes to about 100 feet-ish, maybe? For most of the intelligent flight modes, you have to have enough battery 
to get through the maneuver. So if it's below a certain percentage, you may not be able to actually do the intelligent flight mode like asteroid or boomerang. Flipping this switch to sport mode is also kind of fun. It makes the drone much more responsive. Uh, <laughs> a little scary actually. Just remember, the top speed of this thing is 42 and a half miles per hour and sport mode disengages the obstacle in, uh, avoidance. So if you hit something going that fast, it's not gonna be pretty. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm out of battery, so I'm gonna power this off with a double tap and hold. And the drone is now off. Check out edricker.com for all the drone gear that I use quite a bit. Also check out the video description here for a link to that backpack that I was using earlier from Orca Bags. If you have any questions about the Mavic Air, go ahead and ask them in the comments below and either me or someone else in the drone community is going to help you out. Thanks so much for watching everybody. Until next time, happy flying.